final assembly of every Christmas and summer school term always included a rendition of the school song, 40 years on. As I mouthed the words for the very last time, I had little interest in looking backwards or forwards 20, 30 or 40 years. Instead, my thoughts were focused on a plan, almost a year in the making, and now only some six weeks away from fruition, my first foreign holiday to Germany. The plan was a simple one, by bus, ferry and train to Marburg and along, a journey of just over 26 hours in 1972, and then, with luck, a trip to see the Olympics in Munich, although that part of the plan had always been a little sketchy, and, as it transpired, we never moved more than 20 miles or so from Marburg. We stayed on a street called Anderhausstadt, on the outskirts from and quite a climb out of the town. The suburb was a fairly new one, and quite unusual, inasmuch as the housing stock was predominantly detached, whereas most Germans apparently lived in low-rise apartment blocks. The town hadn't been heavily damaged in the war, and appeared to have remained unchanged for many hundreds of years. Although I'd used a still camera since I was about nine years old, I decided that such a momentous undertaking deserved the use of a new medium, and I pressed into service my father's 8mm Bolex Palliard Cine camera. In the tradition of the true amateur, I rejected the notion of testing either the camera or my technique, which goes some way to explaining why half of it was consigned to the rushes bin. What I'm left with is a four-minute film, all of it taken in the last two weeks of August 1972. Even from a distance of 40 years, I'm still confused as to whether Germany was a totally different culture to that from one I grew up in, or remarkably similar. The town itself, its buildings, the university and student life were remarkably similar to that I'd already experienced as a small child in Oxford, and later growing up in Birmingham. The endless trains carrying new VWs we saw on our train journey across Germany were as familiar as watching the loading of minis at Longbridge. What was different, to me at least, was a sense and a feeling of the town's timelessness and conformity. Coming from somewhere which redevelops its city centre every 20 years or so, and where no two buildings share any characteristics with those around them, Marburg seemed odd. The cost of living was also totally different from what I'd expected. My first job at Kalamazoo was paying £660 per annum. I'd taken £30 with me to Germany, and by the beginning of the second week, my companions and I had exhausted our apparently meagre funds. Not for the first time in recent European history, Germans came to the rescue with a short-term loan to carry us through. One of the things that I remember most about Germany was the tune Popcorn, whereas Alice Cooper and Rod Stewart filled the airways for the UK that month with such classics as Schools Out and You Wear It Well. Only one tune pervaded the air in Germany. Every pub, club, restaurant and party played it. Again and again and again. I have visited Germany on a number of occasions since then, but never returned to Marburg. I did, though, finally make it to Munich, the stadium and the Olympic swimming pool, in December 2009. Better late than never. <laughs>